So while procrastinating my analysis of the killing of a sacred deer, I rewatched The Green Mile, the classic 1999 film about an unusual man on death row in 1935. I sincerely hope I don't have to preface this with a second spoiler warning for a 19 year old movie, but I will anyways. And if you haven't seen The Green Mile yet, you may need to rethink your priorities. John Coffey may be formidable in stature, but as the film progresses, it becomes clear that not only is he innocent of the crime he's accused of, John is a miracle of God. In the film, he cures a bladder infection, removes a terminal brain tumor from the warden's wife, brings back Mr. Jingles from the dead, and shows Paul Edgecombe, played by Tom Hanks, a vision which proves John's innocence. John lets himself be executed because I want it to be over and done with. I'm tired of all the pain I feel in here in the world every day. At the end of the film, 64 years later, thanks to John, Mr. Jingles is still alive and Paul reveals that he's 108 years old. The film ends on his solemn thoughts. If he could make a mouse live so long, how much longer do I have? Before we begin, I want to caution that the film doesn't provide enough information for us to arrive at a 100% certain answer, but I believe this video ends on the best possible answer one could arrive at given the limited information available. We will explore several possible methods, and it will become clear why some methods are simply better than others. Finally, we will not be considering the novel that the film is based on, not only because this channel is called Film Herald, emphasis on film, but also because it's like 600 pages long. In the plot summaries I have read, it appears that the book differs from the film only slightly anyways, and it doesn't give any further clues as to how long Paul will live for. We'll consider four different methods for determining Paul's lifespan, and most of them depend on the one piece of data the film does give us. Mr. Jingles. He's smart, Mr. Jingles. Mr. Jingles. Mr. Jingles is on the verge of death in 1999, meaning that he lived for at least 64 years. But how long are mice supposed to live for? Well, as you would expect, each species is different. Lab mice, for example, can live for two to three years if taken care of properly. But Mr. Jingles was not a lab mouse. The director at least intended Mr. Jingles to be a common field mouse. Frank had certain ideas of what he wanted Mr. Jingles to look like. He wanted it to be a little field mouse that somehow you would believe had gotten into the prison. We spent months breeding mice to get the color that he wanted. In fact, the painstaking work that went into selecting and filming Mr. Jingles is so interesting that I highly recommend the documentary. I'll put the link in the description. But of the five different species of mice that live in Louisiana, where the film took place, only two of them look somewhat comparable. The eastern harvest mouse and the cotton mouse look most like Mr. Jingles. Personally, I lean towards the cotton mouse, which has a lifespan of five months or so. One could argue that Mr. Jingles may not necessarily be native to Louisiana as mice tend to find their way onto ships and into crates and so forth, but that would be venturing into the world of pure speculation as to what species Mr. Jingles might be. For our purposes, we will move forward with the assumption that Mr. Jingles is a cotton mouse, which has a lifespan of five months. If you don't agree, you can substitute the lifespan of whatever species of mouse you think is most appropriate in the following calculations. So now that we've determined Mr. Jingle's life expectancy, we need to know the life expectancy of Paul Edgecombe. Paul was born in 1891, and the average life expectancy of someone born then would be quite low due to infant mortality. But the life expectancy of someone who's 44, as Paul was during the events of the Green Mile, is much better. The closest data set I could find regarding life expectancy during this era was the US Census data from 1930, five years before the events of the film. Paul would be 39 when this census was taken, and the data suggests that Paul would have lived a further 31 years, meaning he could be expected to live to the age of 70 or until 1961. With those two pieces of data, the life expectancy of Mr. Jingles and of Paul Edgecombe, we can consider several different methods to determine how long Paul will live for. If John's energy simply adds years to one's life, then Paul could be expected to live another 64 years or so past his life expectancy, which means he may live to the age of 134 or until 2025. Considering that he's 108 years old in the film and looks pretty old already, this actually looks pretty close to accurate. Now this could insinuate that Paul will live until he's 134, but it may also indicate that Mr. Jingle's lifespan hasn't been added to the age of 64, but rather multiplied. If the latter is true and Mr. Jingles was a cotton mouse, he lived 153.6 times longer than he should have. 
If Mr. Jingle's five month lifespan was extended 153.6 times to a total lifespan of 64 years, Paul's 70 year lifespan could be expected to extend to 10,752 years. But consider that perhaps John Coffey's energy only extends your remaining lifespan, not your total lifespan. There's no way to tell how old Mr. Jingles was when he was imbued with John's magic. So let's simply take an average, the middle of the two extremes, and argue that Mr. Jingles was 2.5 months old. Extended over 64 years, his remaining 2.5 months of life become 307.2 times his natural lifespan. For Paul, if we multiply his remaining 26 years by 307.2 and then add his existing lifespan, he could expect to live for 8,031 years, 2 months, and 1 day, markedly less than our previous estimate. But there are other factors that we're not considering when doing these three rather crude calculations. First of all, Paul already looks pretty old. So unless he's going to look like Skeletor by the turn of the next century, these figures don't seem realistic. Now, why do I surround myself with fools? Even the robots are smarter than you! Secondly, when we start assuming what sort of formula is being used to increase Mr. Jingle's lifespan, it could be addition or multiplication as we tried to achieve, but it could also be exponential or logarithmic or trigonomic or even regonomic. The point is, it's pure speculation. It might be slightly more scientific to consider John's magic in terms of dosage. If John's magic works the same way as other drugs, such as alcohol for example, then the strength of the effect, inebriation, depends on how much the person weighs. A heavy set person can drink more alcohol than a smaller person can before getting drunk. This weight requirement largely applies to dosage levels of other drugs. So to determine how long Paul would live for, we need two other pieces of data. How much Mr. Jingles and Tom Hanks weigh. Cotton mice weigh 50 grams at most, whereas Tom Hanks weighs 78 kilograms, according to HealthyCeleb.com. Unfortunately, because Tom Hanks weighs 1,560 times more than a cotton mouse, a dose capable of extending Mr. Jingle's lifespan by 64 years only gives Paul Edgecombe an extra 15 days. And because we know that he lives to at least 108, 38 years past his expected lifespan, this method is a bust. In fact, it was doomed from the outset because we were assuming that the two miracles are equivalent. Paul was shown a vision of what happened to the two girls John was accused of murdering, whereas Mr. Jingles was given a shock from John when Dale was executed. The point is, we don't know if these two acts result in similar dosages, which is why the best method for estimating how long Paul Edgecombe will live for is also the simplest and unfortunately the saddest. The elder Paul Edgecombe was played by Robert William Dabbs Greer, an actor born in 1917 who has the largest filmography I've ever seen. He was 82 when he worked on The Green Mile. I'm 108 years old, Elaine. If he was supposed to be 108 years old in these scenes, then this 108 year old looked like he was 82 or 31.7% younger than he actually was. Dabbs Greer passed away in 2007 at the age of 90. If we increase that by 31.7%, we can come to the age at which Paul Edgecombe would have died, 118 years old in 2009. This is undoubtedly the best measure for how long Paul Edgecombe would have lived for. It doesn't depend on any amount of speculation and it only uses readily apparent information. But if you disagree, if you think you have a better method than this, or if you think that I got any of the math wrong, you can find the links to all of the sources used as well as the calculations for each method in the description. Let me know if I got anything wrong or if you think that you have a better method. Okay, now I promise to start working on the killing of a sacred deer. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this has been the Film Herald.